My name is Jeff Kaiser and I'm a neonatologist at Texas Children's Hospital. What I bring to this division is, um, is an expertise in neonatal neurology. What I bring is now research that's going to um, uh, focus on what I consider the most important organ, the brain. Um, it's not enough now for neonatologists to have babies survive. We need to have them survive free of problems and we need them to be happy and we need them to not have brain injury. I was involved in the original CoolCap trial and that was the very first trial uh, showing that uh, hypothermia actually allows these babies to survive free of, un uh, of brain problems. So I've been cooling for now 11 or 12 years. I've been involved in cooling over 120 babies. The data suggests um, that number one, they uh, more survive and more survive without mental problems. In the old days, most of these babies would die or get cerebral palsy or mental retardation. And the data now shows that they're surviving better free of problems. If you're uh, a parent um, uh, who has a baby who has a lack of oxygen at birth, it's usually a surprise. Everything has been going great. Um, you've had a great pregnancy and for some reason the baby has a lack of oxygen uh, at birth. Important things need to be done and they need to be done very quickly. We need to get your baby from where you deliver to our center and we need to do it as fast as possible. We need to get them here before six hours of birth. We do a physical exam. We make sure in fact it seems like they've had a lack of oxygen. We then pull, put them on a, uh, on a bed that has a cooling blanket on it. And that cooling blanket keeps that temperature w at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit for a full three days. During that time, most of the babies are on the ventilators. They're very sick. They have low blood pressure. At the end of 72 hours, we slowly rewarm your baby um, to 98.6 over uh, four to six hours. And then over the next day or two, we want to get an MRI of their brain. We want to see, uh, has there been brain injury? And we want to be able to tell you as a parent what to expect in the future. We know that the babies who get cooled, uh, who have this problem, end up much better. Something happens to a baby during labor and delivery. So for instance, the mom's uterus will rupture, or there'll be a tight cord around the neck or the placenta will separate from the uterus. And these are all things where the, f the baby inside just won't get enough oxygen. That causes some of the brain cells to die. Right now, there's nothing we can do about that. But what happens for most of these babies is after a period of six to 24 hours, a cascade of events occur where lots and lots more brain cells die. And the, if you start the cooling within six hours of birth, it's been shown that you can save most of those brain cells. Hence, um, you'll be smarter. Hence, uh, you'll be able to run and jump and play normally. And hence, you won't have cerebral palsy. During the cooling process, it's very important that we keep the baby at a standard low temperature for a long time. So if the baby is held, um, they're going to warm up and that's not going to be good for their brains. So for that, for those first 72 hours, the parents do not hold the baby. When you have the original event, what we call a sentinel event, like the uterus rupturing, immediately some brain cells die because of lack of oxygen. But then there is a biochemical process that goes on um, where the other cells around that area um, start to lose the ability to handle oxygen. They uh, decide without cooling, they actually, um, th they die. What cooling does, it seems to decrease the metabolism of these brain cells. So they don't need oxygen as much. So they don't undergo this biochemical cascade of going towards death. They, they kind of go to sleep. And then at the end of 72 hours, they haven't died. Um, they then come back to life of sorts. Uh, the babies that need cooling, um, thank God this is a rare event. 
So it's about one or two out of every thousand babies born. Um, but that turns out to be a large number of babies when, when you think about it. And these are, again, babies who would have died or would have been severely affected. And now they have a chance for a happy, normal life. During transport here, the transport uh, nurses and respiratory therapists know to keep the temperature low. And we can, will continuously monitor that temperature to make sure it doesn't get too low. It can be dangerous if it gets too low. Um, in fact, babies can have arrhythmias where their hearts stop. So um, this, this cooling really should only be done in, in places that, that do it a lot um, and have a lot of experience. Um, while it has been shown to be safe, it's been shown to be safe in large NICUs. The way to uh, improve the outcomes of these babies, specifically brain outcomes, is to have this large multidisciplinary group who's thinking about this problem from all different facets. It's really going to um, uh, make a huge difference for the babies. The beauty of the newborn brain is they, they talk about the newborn brain as having plasticity. If some of the baby's cells die in a certain area, other cells can take over for that area. That can't happen with adults or kids. It's special about babies. So if there's any time in the lifespan in which you can have an excellent outcome from a lack of oxygen to your brain, it's when you're a baby. Um, and then we now have these therapies that can even improve that outcome.